All right, everyone, welcome once again. Uh, good morning to you all. I trust everybody's doing awesome. Had a lovely, lovely break. Um, so welcome to the course, BC203, The Local Church. Um, uh, before we get started, why don't we just start off with a word of prayer, shall we? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we look to you. We come to you. We bow down before you. We honor you. Lord, we thank you for this privilege, so this opportunity that we uh, gathered together in your name to learn about you, Father. Even as we uh, learn about the local church, Father, I pray that you will continue to pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your revelation, uh, so that we would understand uh, this subject better. After all, the church is your idea. So Holy Spirit, you lead us, you guide us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, you guys are ready. I hope you were able to download the PDF, uh, the course notes. Uh, for this course, we will be uh, referring to one of the APC publications, uh, The House of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, the House of God. <clears throat> um, so just very quickly, uh, we'll go through the contents of uh, what we will be doing. Right In section one, we'll go through origins and purpose. Uh, in this section, we'll look all about uh, you know, the origins of the church, um, the idea behind the church, the importance of the church, uh, and the the role of the church, right? And then we move on to the second uh, section, section two, uh, God's blueprint. Um, what is his idea? What does he think uh, about the church and how it should be? Um, and and the third section is about divine order, the church discipline. We This is where we get a little bit more practical um, as well. Um, and then in section four and section five, uh, we will not be doing uh, all the chapters in section four and section five, because uh, some of the chapters in section four and section five will be covered in your third year class, uh, BC310, that is church and ministry administration and uh, urban church planting, uh, right? So some of those chapters will be covered in your uh, final semester, okay? Um, so let's uh, begin. So, uh, all right, guys, so what is your idea or your understanding of the church? Give me all the right answers. The church is the house of God. Mm, okay, end of course, right? You all have passed the course successfully. We can uh, end. <laughs> Good one, Isaac. Thank you. The church is the body of Christ. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What are the the church is me and you. Mm. All right. <laughs> nice. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean. Church is where we gather to worship God, hear the word. Right. That's awesome. Thank you. Keep it going, guys. The church, yeah, is, people of God. The church is people of God gathering to worship God. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Alatoli, good to see you. Leah. Aradhana Subhashesh. Yes, I can say again, the church is where the body of believers uh, right. congregate to, to hear the word of God and um, to, mm. uh, to, to hear the word of God and then to relate with God. Right. Awesome, guys. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for sharing. Like I said, um, all of you shared all the right answers. Uh, which makes the subject pretty easy, I guess, and also hopefully interesting. Um, yeah, it's everything that what you guys have shared. But then uh, yeah, we also see that, it, <clears throat> that this course is all about understanding uh, God's idea of the church, right? And so we'll try and follow what is his blueprint, right? Uh, but again, we all know what a blueprint is, isn't it? Um, the architects will have a better understanding of it when they are trying to build a uh, a, a project or whatnot, they will first 
plan it, sketch it, design it, and they will have a blueprint, right, as to how this um, the building should look like, uh, etc. Everything will be planned out, right? The entrance, the exit, uh, the rooms, the hallways, the dining area, and whatnot, uh, right? So you get the blueprint and then you actually get into the work based on the blueprint you keep looking at the blueprint if the measurements are right if the uh, everything is accurate in everything that you are doing or building right so uh, the builders the construction workers the engineers civil engineers what what not right they keep referring to what we know as the blueprint right um, it's it's uh, it's like it's it's a manual Right. Uh, pretty much uh, like what um, God gave Moses, isn't it? Uh, you know, when he was, uh, when Moses was with God for 40 days and 40 nights uh, in Mount Sinai, uh, it is there where he gets the instruction, right, uh, to how to build the tabernacle, right? So God gives Moses the blueprint. So he brings that blueprint and then he gives it to the people. It's like, okay, we are to build a tabernacle it's supposed to be this uh you know this centimeter long at this height everything including the details of the color okay we need to have uh, these colors uh, these doors has to be made in this uh these altars has to be covered in gold um the nail should go this deep everything isn't it guys so um and then they get into the work Right. Um, so without the blueprint, what are you going to build? Uh, you know, you, another example, classic example, again, we all know of all this is Noah's Ark, right? God telling Noah, uh, OK, this the Ark's got to be this long, this height. Uh, it's supposed to have these many stages or whatnot, right? Um, if, if God said, uh, OK, Noah, go build an Ark, uh, right? I need more than that, Lord. Uh, <laughs> Uh, right, everything uh, when you read that story with its details it's so beautiful isn't it uh, about the tabernacle of Moses be it about the ark uh, you know it has to be covered with pitch inside and out um, the details are amazing and so then we pause and then we've come so far uh, in our day and age where we can have our own ideas of a church Oh, this is how a church should look like. Um, this is what it's supposed to do. Uh, and then we ignore the blueprint that was given to us by God. And then we have the tendency, tendency or the audacity to go ahead and just do what we want, whatever we want to do, isn't it? Um, if every church uh, on earth followed God's blueprint, I'm sure the earth would have been evangelized by now. Right. Everyone on the planet Earth, all the seven billion people will be Christians. Yes or no? Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Later, but uh, but it's what it is. I think, and this is my humble opinion. I think somewhere along the way, uh, it, it is possible that we've lost sight of God's heart, His blueprint, uh, His desire, His vision uh, for His church. Uh, and that's what this course is all about. It's not, uh, we're not going to talk uh, about a bunch of methods or techniques. Uh, we'll talk about a certain uh, methods, but it's, but everything based on the word of God. Okay. Uh, but a little later on in the chapter, I will make this point, but I'll say it now anyways, that over the centuries, uh, you know, that has passed by, that has gone by, we've seen uh, the methods have changed or evolved, right? But anything that's related with, with us as Christians, right? Um, but the principle remains the same. Okay, so we'll talk about all of that as we progress. So this is the heart behind this subject, uh, is that we would understand and capture the heart of God for his church because it's his desire, it's his uh, idea. Are right, you guys with me so far? Yep, yes, no, maybe. Oh, I hope everybody had your morning coffee or tea, green tea, whatever. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll go uh, in your notes. We'll go to page three, um, the first chapter, um, titled "The Church." 
its spiritual and natural dimensions okay remember this is section one and it's uh, partly labeled uh, the origins and purpose okay so that's what this uh, chapters are going to focus on okay the origins and its purpose that's section one and so it starts off by saying i will build my church right i will build my church um let's go to matthew chapter 16. Uh, although the uh, i know the notes it gives us a scripture um let's do a little bit of hard work open our bibles okay um go to matthew chapter 16. hey sid good to see you hello pastor hey hey Okay, uh, so I'm assuming that we have all um, come to Matthew chapter 16. Um, let's look at, let's read from uh, verse 13, although the notes says from 16, uh, sorry, 15. We'll read from verse 13, okay? And can someone read for us, please? Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 19. Matthew chapter 13. Yeah, go ahead, Rosalind. Um, it's Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 onwards. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of uh, Rosalind, people... sorry to, uh, Rosalind, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are in Matthew chapter 16, uh, not 13. Uh, sorry. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 onwards, 13 to 19. Sorry, Pastor. No, no problem. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Still sixteen, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, no, go, go until nineteen, uh, Roslyn. Jesus answered and said to them, "Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you." are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven amen amen thank you Rosalind. okay um so i i, I love this uh, particular passage um it's, it's beyond crucial, beyond important. Uh, you should highlight it with multiple colors and keep it in your Bible because it's very important, right? Uh, one of the reasons why I asked um, for us to read from verse 13 is because it says that when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, um, every, any, every time or any time uh, in the Bible, uh, a geographical location is mentioned, uh, it's very important for us to understand its context, okay, of the passage that we are reading. Uh, we need to ask, why is that place uh, mentioned? What, you know, because Bible is filled with stories. It is not everywhere that uh, not all the geographical locations are mentioned, right? 
Um, you guys just hold on a second. Are you able to hear me? Well, okay. Yes, yes Pastor. Okay. Just give me one moment. Some things doesn't seem right. Okay, just hold on, guys. Apologies. Right, am I still on? Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, it starts off by saying uh, they were in the region of Caesarea Philippi. Okay. So let me just quickly share a tab, um, the map of this place. Where are you, tab? All right. Here we are. Great. Uh, is this visible? Can everybody see? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is the map of uh, Israel, the ancient Israel, as you can see. Um, okay. We see where the Sea of Galilee is. Uh, you see where Nazareth is. Okay. And then you see all the way up here in the north is. Caesarea Philippi. Okay, Caesarea Philippi. Uh, now, this region was a big no no for the Jews. It was strictly prohibited area for the Jews to go that side. Now, it was one of it. Uh, it was one of the areas uh, even before the time of Jesus. It was a very a popular route uh, for international trade between Mesopotamia and Egypt and whatnot. Okay, uh, and also, uh, why was it a big no-no for the Jews? And why is Jesus there? Is what makes this whole passage amazing, right? Uh, so they are in uh, Caesarea Philippi. Now it was. Uh, it was ruled during the time of Herod. Herod built uh, three temples uh, in honor of Caesar. That's Caesarea is Caesar, okay, for Caesar Augustus of that period. And then Philip was one of his sons. Uh, so he had mul uh, multiple sons. So there was another temple in Samaria. So Caesarea, uh, Samaria is another temple. It was given to another as one of his sons. But Caesarea Philippi, that's where it is, way up in the north. Uh, it's, it was a big no-no because you see there's another name called Banias there. Banias right above Caesarea Philippi. Okay. Uh, it's in that very region. Uh, everything ungodly, everything unrighteous, uh, uh, right, uh, you know, and everything evil, everything demonic. Uh, would take place, would practice. Now, so there was a temple uh, built for the Roman and a Greek god called Pan, P-A-N. Okay, and the ancient name was Panias, P-A-N-I-A-S. And then later the word evolved and it became Panias. Okay, uh, now there, it was in that region. Uh, and this, by the way, is just below Mount Hermon, right? There you can see, right? Uh, in the map. Yes, guys. Right, so Mount Hermon is one of the tallest and the highest peak. Not one of it is the highest peak in Israel, right? And it's, it's snow capped uh, through the year. Okay, not just during the winter. It's snow capped through the year, so it was pretty high. And you know what happens when a mountain is filled with snow during the summer? The, uh, I mean, there's always spring waters that come down. So that region was very famous for uh, for fertility uh, and whatnot. So people there would worship this. God and everything evil would happen there, like uh, animal sacrifice, bestiality, uh, children sacrifice, idolatry, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, and and then there was this. There is this a uh, huge cave kind of a looking thing. Okay, a, a deep cave that is again filled with water. What they would, what people there would do is they would sacrifice animals, goats, um, even children. Uh, you know, what they would do is they would kill the animal and they would throw it into the cave that is filled with water. Uh, and their idea was if the body just goes down, uh, animal or whatever goes down, that means their sacrifice accepted. If the body comes up in the water, that means God Pan is not happy with the sacrifice. All that, all these beliefs, right? And People there in that region believed that cave 
was the gate to the underworld, which means that was known as the gate of Hades, gates to you know the underworld, the hell or whatever. You get the idea now. So people are I mean, Jesus have taken his disciples, and disciples must be wondering, is like, what is, why is he taking? Doesn't he know that we are not supposed to come here? as Jews because it was prohibited right and and uh, the things that used to happen there will make Sodom and Gomorrah look like its little brother okay <laughs> so that's how bad the situation was it is in that point where the caves and uh, the rocks are filled with idols and all these evil practices and there Jesus asks okay who do you say I am and then we see from verse 15 in your notes right he said to them but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, comma, the Son of the living God. Full stop. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Okay. Flesh and blood has not revealed. Okay. Underline that reveal, revelation, unveiling. Okay, uh, and I also say to you that you are Peter, comma, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, you see that, shall not prevail against this. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, um, and here one of the interesting things is saying. You see all of this behind you guys. You see these idols. You see these false gods. You see all this evil thing that is happening. Well, very soon you're going to see uh, that I am going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Right? He's giving, he's setting a proper context uh, there for the text. Um, and so Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church so that means the church is his um, the denominations are man-made okay um, but the church is God's idea it is his it belongs to him and then he says uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail right um, so in the olden days now again uh, in the olden days and now uh, gates uh, it's it, it's like uh, what used to happen, uh, we have like the panchayat system, uh, right, in India, um, panchayats. Uh, so where all these leaders of the village uh, gather together and make decisions and whatnot. So very, it's very similar to the ancient times at the gates, there would be, uh, you know, the leaders of the city who would gather together and make uh, decisions, uh, give justice or whatever. So uh, the gates were strong points of a city very important very very important uh, right it was it, it gives access to the entire city but nevertheless gates are stationary right it doesn't move uh, when jesus says and the gates of hell shall not prevail jesus is also suggesting that the church that he is going to build is going to be built on the revelation of that he is the son of god and that the church is going to advance to the gates. We as a church are to advance. What happened here in this setting? Jesus went to this gate. Isn't it? The gates didn't come here. The gates of Hades is what they call it in the people in Caesarea Philippi. It didn't come to Jesus. Jesus took his disciples and he went to that region. Isn't it? Um, and so what Jesus is saying is that the church that he is building will destroy the powers of darkness. Now, the gates of hell, right? the gate, the Hades, right, will not prevail. That means when you destroy the gates of hell, everything that, that the hell is known for, you know, the, the, the demonic kingdom is known for, will not prosper. And then he says uh, in verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven heaven and uh, in revelation 118 uh, we see that jesus telling that the keys of the kingdom of heaven has been given to him right all authority 
And then he goes on to say that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Right? And uh, we as the church of God, we've been given this power and authority. Right? Uh, uh, one of my uh, favorite scriptures in the recent past is... Uh, in 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 the book of chap uh, the book of uh, Acts chapter nine I guess nine I think uh, when Jesus tells Ananias to go and uh, meet Paul, and Ananias is very scared. It's like why should I go and meet Paul? You know he's killed your people. It's like no, I he is a chosen vessel. I have chosen him to carry my name. I have chosen him to carry my name, right? Uh, when you think about <clears throat> all the brands of this world, uh, <clears throat> Zara or whatever, Reebok, Nike, Adidas, Ferrari, uh, Lamborghini, think of uh, what is this, Milton Flask, <laughs> uh, whatever, right? <laughs> Any Every product, every brand of this uh, on this planet wants you to carry their name. Right, that's why the sportsmen, all these athletes have uh, these uh, deal with these uh, sports brands like right? Nike and Reebok. Okay, I want to buy Nike T-shirt. Why? Because Roger Federer also wears a Nike T-shirt, um, etc., etc. Right? But when we realize that we've been given, uh, you know, we've been asked, and he's given us his name, and then we carry his name. Uh, we begin to function very differently as his church, right? So, um, so far, so the church is, is his idea, it's his desire, it's his plan, and church was built by Jesus himself, right? And we are asked, we are commanded to uh, advance and, and destroy the works of hell because the gates of hell shall not prevail. And we've also been given the keys, um, of authority, the keys of the kingdom, right? So let's slow things down a little bit. Uh, and are you guys with me so far? Yes, I guess it feels like I'm just going on and on. But... Are you with me? Okay. Hey, very quickly, uh, what is the... Uh, what do you say for church in Hindi? Kalisia. Kalisia. Ah, okay. Well, then my Hindi is not bad. <laughs> but okay. Um, so again, I think in a way we can say that uh, hey, we get this word, uh, this Hindi word Kalisia, from the Greek word ekklesia. As you can see it in the notes, on page four, that uh, simply means ekklesia, right? Uh, that's the Greek name for church. Uh, it simply means uh, called out. Okay, a called out, a calling. We are called out. We, in other words, we are set apart. Right? Just like how the people of Israel were called out of Egypt. Right, they were not set free from their slavery just for the sake of being free, they were made free from slavery unto God. Right in Exodus chapter 19, uh, we read that that you know God is saying, Out of all the nations of the earth, although the whole earth is mine, I have chosen you to be my treasured possession, a holy nation. You see what I'm saying? Okay, the church, we as a church, we were dead in sin, Ephesians chapter 2, right? We were in darkness. Now he's brought us to it, his eternal light, right? So we were slaves to sin and death, but he's redeemed us, he's purchased us, he's ransomed us, and now we are in his light. We are called out. We as his church, we are called out to be set apart. Right? And so there are a few uh, definitions there um, in, in your notes, the textbook page four. It says, we 
um, called, a people who respond to a heavenly call, called out, a people who have come out of the world, a people who go together not as individuals, called out to gather for a definite purpose, a people with heavenly purpose. Okay, so we are not called, we are not called out for the sake of being called out. We are called out unto Him for His purpose for us, a very divine call. We are set apart, right? Though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Okay, so now that uh, a little bit of a foundation um, is set, now that we understand that the church is uh, His idea, and we are to follow the blueprint that God has given to us. Um, and the significance of Jesus saying, I will build my church um, in the region where he says that is, is super significant. And having understood all of that, we'll just go a little deeper and uh, into the dimensions of the church. Okay? There are two key dimensions. One is the spiritual dimension and the other is the natural dimension. Okay, So we we'll look at the spiritual dimension of the church. Like most of you all said, the church is the body of Christ, right? It's the house of God, everything. Um, so the note says, there are several things that the scriptures reveal about the church. Uh, we consider a few aspects, and one of them is the church is Christ's body. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 and 24 uh, says the same very quickly. Let me read it for you guys. Colossians 1 verse 18 and 24, I'm just reading it from your notes. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Verse 24, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church it's powerful isn't it um so the spiritual dimension of it is uh that the church is his body that means when we say yes to god when we say yes to jesus when we accept jesus as our personal lord and savior what happens salvation there and that means we are being part of his body Right, every member, every individual. Right, uh, there's so many things uh, we get baptized uh, into His church through by the Holy Spirit. Um, they, uh, when someone receives us, they receive Jesus. Uh, when someone hears us, uh, they hear Him. If they reject us, they reject Him. All the scripture uh, references are given in the notes. Right, and again, once one of my favorite things is from chapter nine. When someone does us harm, they are harming Christ. Acts chapter 9, verse 5, uh, the famous incident uh, when, when Jesus shows up, uh, encounters Paul, what is the first thing that he asks? He is persecuting the church. Jesus shows up and says, why are you persecuting me? Isn't it? And so we as a church are his body. Right, we've been baptized. Baptized is immersion. That means, we, uh, and also means that we've been brought in to His family. Right. Uh, we'll look at a little bit in in the Great Commission as we progress as well. Okay. So the church is the body of Christ, uh, and because Christ is the head, and He is eternal, the church is also eternal. Right? It is uh, the church is not a temporary arrangement, but an eternal handiwork of God. Right? Uh, John chapter three verse sixteen: uh, Whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life or everlasting life. When we say yes to Jesus, one we become part of His body as a church, and because He is eternal, the church, we the church, are also eternal. Right? And and we've, uh, we've already uh, gone through this section in the previous section that church is Christ's instrument to execute his purpose. Uh, we are to advance against the gates of hell because we've been at uh, the kingdom authority and power has been vested on us. Um, the keys has been given to us. 
right? Then let's move on. Every believer is a member of Christ's body, individually as well. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Okay, so every member is, a, is is part of the body of Christ, and so that's the spiritual dimension uh, of to the church. Uh, and the next section is the natural dimensions of the church. Okay, so here we just before we continue, just to draw a distinction between the spiritual dimension and the natural dimension. The spirituals are the intangibles, the things that we cannot see. When we say we are part of his church, we are part of his body, uh, are the, are the other intangibles, right? The things that we cannot see, but we believe by faith. And then the natural dimensions are the things that we see, the tangibles. Okay, the things that we can explain or quantify um, and yeah. Okay, so uh, let's read First Timothy chapter three, verse fourteen and fifteen. First Timothy chapter three, verse fourteen and fifteen. It says, "These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know that you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God." which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. Okay, so the context again, uh, very briefly, is that um, his mentee, Timothy, Paul is writing to his mentee, Timothy, uh, who is uh, heading the ch a church in Ephesus. That's where he is. Um, and so Paul is writing to him and saying, okay, hey, you better watch yourself, uh, you know, uh, how you behave, how you carry yourself around you conduct yourself well in the house of god look at the words that he is using which is the church of the living god right so the local church is the natural expression of the spiritual church it's a natural it's a physical expression of the spiritual church the, the local church is called the house of god the household of faith right we become like a family that's what you call the household isn't it in ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 it says now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god it's a very important chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, isn't it? It talks about our redemption through Jesus Christ, how he is our righteousness, how he has saved us and ransomed and redeemed us from darkness into light. And because Jesus has done that, Ephesians 2.19 says, therefore, right? And I say this all the time, right? Anytime there's therefore, you need to ask, why is it therefore? And right. Uh, so the previous verses will give us the context. And then it says, you are no longer strangers. Because of what Jesus has done on the cross, because he died and rose again, because he shed his blood for us, because we are redeemed and purchased and brought by his blood, we are no longer strangers or foreigners. We are the citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And so we, uh, we are the physical and the natural expression of the spiritual church right um i hope you guys are with me um in in page uh we are, we are in page seven we've already expressed um, that the local church is the physical expression of the spiritual body of of christ in a certain geographical area Okay, so when he sees that there's uh, there's a church in in Bangalore, in Kothanur area, uh, or in wherever Africa, Nigeria, um, what he sees, he does not see the denomination. He doesn't see that it's a Methodist or a Lutheran or an AG or a Pentecostal or a CPM, APC. Right, uh, he sees it as the physical expression of his church for that area right 
um, and then he expects that his church of that area to advance uh, and uh, to advance against the kingdom of darkness um, and win that city, win that area for him. Okay, and then finally, this, I want to just close with this uh, very, uh, I think, important question. Um, why should you be part of a local church? Should you be part of a local church? I'm talking about the natural dimension, the physical expression of of the spiritual church. Come on, guys. <laughs> it's not a trick question, but <laughs> can I can I say something? Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, I think we should be part of the local church because as already established is the expression and the purpose and the intent of God through Christ. So we should be part of the local church so that yeah. we can carry on the purpose of God in establishing the church. Thank you. Thanks, Isaac. Very interesting that you mentioned that so we can carry on the purpose of God. Uh, I think we'll touch on that a little bit in just next section. But yeah, go ahead. Somebody else was saying something? It is also a command <clears throat> that we got we get from God that we should we should never stop gathering. Hmm. Yeah, wow. so we should be part of the church in order to fulfill a command that was given to us. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So, but here's another question to all of us, um, and it's a kind of rather a genuine question. Okay, why wouldn't people want to be part of a local church? Why wouldn't people want to be part of a physical expression, which is the local church? Have you come across people who don't want to be part of a church? Yes, Pastor, I can say something about that. Yes. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, basically, people don't want to be, most times, people don't want to be part of the local church because of the personal character of the pastor. Mm. The way pastor conducts himself or how he conducts himself in the area, so people will always choose that, uh, no, I cannot be part of that church. So the best way, since we are attending a Bible college, we should also mind that church is church, but we should also mind about our personal character, our personal conduct in the community so that we don't repel people away from church. Thank you. Thanks, Lavega. Yes, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, when a leader is not a leader of character, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, thank you. And what else, guys? Come on, just talk to me. Uh, put it in the chat section. Why wouldn't people want to be part of the local church? Yeah, go ahead, Sid. Pastor, according to my opinion, like why people wouldn't be liking to be a part of the church? Like the thing is that whenever a, like a new believer, suppose we come from a different background, when a new believer is going to the church, simultaneously what will happen? He is coming from a new belief. He like for Christianity for him or her Christianity is new. Similarly, that time there will be a lot of restriction posed to that guy or girl. Like this thing is not to be done. These things are not to be done. You should not sit with that. These are the things we don't do in Christianity. So sometimes like there are some restrictions which are like the thing is that they feel they might feel like we were there in that religion that was more good than this. Mm, okay. And and some, and sometimes what happened. The thing is that people are coming in Christianity thinking that their what like the thing is that their griefs, their griefs will be taken away. But sometimes when the pastor is preaching in the church, the things come in the mind. You have to take your own cross. You have to take your burden. You have and the, sometimes the verses are being preached in the church like the father, father against son, mother against daughter. So sometimes this kind of a teaching when it is posted in the church, like it's been taught. People will think, yeah, we will. People will think like we were happy there. So these are some of the points, according to me, which like if a person is listening, he would say like I was happy not coming to the church. Thanks, Sid, uh, for that very honest opinion. Uh, it's wonderful. 
What is it? Uh, are there more reasons, according to you? Um, I think yeah. one of the reasons is uh, there's a lot of divisions within the church. So mm -hmm. people don't want to be there. Like They get different looks, weird looks sometimes. So mm -hmm. they, they just don't want to be there. I have one of my relatives. Uh, and they have some other silly reason, like, uh, we are the church. Why should we need a church? Mm. And <laughs> so mm. they have a small gathering within themselves, and they say, I'm not a part of any church. I don't go to church. Even when I chose theology, they were like, are you going to build a church? Don't do that. That's not mm. right. Like, we are the church. Why we need a church? Why we need a physical building? Um, right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I think we're having a little, a little bit of an interesting... Uh, if just extend the break time just a little bit is that okay so we'll just continue Rosalind sorry you were saying something yeah so uh, I feel that uh, maybe people don't want to be under subjection of the past under the leadership of some someone like you know to uh, where, wherein they have to report to somebody and mm. um, well I have not come across such people but then just a thought maybe for this reason or sometimes they feel that um, this pastor is asking tight he's interested in our money money and, right sure yeah. sure yeah yeah thanks roslyn yeah again very valid thank you yeah may zilotoli says maybe they may be hurt by their leadership yeah past experience uh, abuse uh, um yeah bad experience from church uh, uh yeah. some 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 people say god is omnipresent he is everywhere so you don't need to go to church even in your house god is there so they prefer to pray from their houses thank yeah. you yeah thanks paul thank you yeah well, well uh i think when we ask this question why should you be part of a local church I've, it's also very valid to ask uh, why why someone wouldn't want to be part of a local church right um it's very important i guess because like i said uh, if if the church uh, the physical expression of the church uh, on on earth was according to god's blueprint um like i said all the seven billion odd people would be Christians. Right? Uh, the Great Commission would be done in dusted types, <laughs> uh, isn't it? But uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Now we understand the importance of it. Um, but there are some uh, scriptures that I absolutely love, and one of one of the scriptures uh, is at the very end, Psalm ninety two, verse thirteen. Psalm ninety two verse thirteen. It says, um, "Those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish uh, in in the courts of our God." You know, those who uh, are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. And I just want to close with this uh, example. I I normally don't like to give examples or uh, saying that okay, the church is like this and the church is like that. Uh, especially it's not online but then this i thought okay it made a little bit of sense so i'm just sharing it as a thought um, i heard someone say that a church is like noah's ark uh you know when you enter noah's ark was filled with all kinds of animals right noah's ark was not a seven star cruise liner from uh, england to new york absolute five star hotel fancy uh -uh. Okay, clean bed sheets and cots, uh, you know, fresh mineral water to drink. <laughs> right? No, Azak was not like that. Uh, it was filled with animals, all kinds of animals. And with all kinds of animals comes with all kinds of smells and their, you know, dungs and whatnot. Right? But it was still the safest place on earth, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but so when you walk into a church, uh, yeah, physical expression of a church you're not going to find perfect people but then uh, churches we come to that point so if church is god's idea uh you know um then we yeah we we keep that as our core and uh, we see how we can go about living life <laughs> right so uh, I'll, I'll stop the recording here for this session